What's up guys, The Golf Guy here, and today I am here in Carlsbad, California at the Evenroll HQ, and I'm here with Alan, who's gonna be building me my own custom Evenroll putter. I've been rocking an Evenroll putter for about the last year or so, absolutely loved it, and so we're gonna see if we can tune it up and make sure we are rolling those perfect putts. So Alan's the master fitter here at Even Roll, and I'd love to get his take on why getting a putter fitting is absolutely essential in order to have and score at your best. Yeah, so I mean, a putter fitting is, is a really valuable um, experience. The first thing we're gonna take a look at is your current, uh, your current putter. Take a look at the loft and the lie, the weight, the balance, um, even the grip, and see, see how it's performing for you. Uh, we'll put your stroke on the high-speed camera, analyze how the golf ball's rolling. So that's really something that the naked eye is not gonna be able to pick up. Um, it's gonna give us a lot of valuable data in order to build uh, the perfect putter that uh, gives you no more excuses. Right, Vivek, so I'm gonna take a look at your, your current putter here. It looks like we've got the ER2 VB with the long plumber neck. Um, have you ever made any adjustments to this for the loft and lie or the length? I'm pretty sure everything is very standard. Okay, looks like maybe just a grip change at some yep. point. Gotcha. So I'm gonna take this in the back and uh, measure it out. Cool? Cool. So this is what we call a green gauge. It's uh, basically just a measurement tool that allows us to check the loft and lie of just about any golf club. But yep, yeah, looks like it's very similar to what we would do off the shelf. Nothing's been bumped or bend it at any point. Our standard lock is two degrees, standard lie is about 70, and actually it looks like there's only about one to one and a half degree loft on this. Okay, okay. so we'll, we'll take that into account through the fitting. We will double check his length here. Looks like it's about 35 and a half inches with the grip on there, and that's it's gonna be important just to kind of know what you're used to, right? How long have you been using this putter, Vivek? Just about a year. About a year, so you've had plenty of golf to get real comfortable with this, even if it's not necessarily perfect. Check your swing weight here. Pretty high swing weight, looks like to be about F2, right? And this is actually a pretty light grip, which is gonna increase that swing weight. So let's go test it out. Cool. Maybe one quick question for you, Alan. How yeah. often would you recommend getting lofts, lies, all of the general kind of swing specs or putter specs rechecked? Yeah, it probably depends on how easy it for you to find somebody to check it, right? Having a, a green gauge or a putter, putter bender can, uh, not every local golf shop is going to have that. Um, it also depends on how much golf you're playing, right? If you're, if you're playing a few times a week, I would say every six months to a year. Um, and if maybe if you're a monthly golfer, maybe every couple of years would be, would be my suggestion on that one. So Vivek, here's your putter. I'll have you warm up, hit me about five or six putts just to get loose. And we'll take it from there. I'm gonna ask you some questions. Cool. Nice. So do you feel like putting is a strength or a weakness? Uh, I'd say right now it's probably still a weakness. Still a weakness, okay. Um, I have, I like to think I'm a very streaky putter. Sure. Uh, so I'll have a lot of really good days, uh, and then when it's a bad day, it can tend to get quite bad. Okay, okay. How about, you know, if, it, if you do have a bad day, is it more speed control related? Is it missing your shorties? What do you think? Um, I'd say it generally gets to be on the lag putts especially, where those ones get a little awry and then that just throws everything out of whack. That makes sense. Misses with your confidence a little bit. Very nice, very nice. How about a certain miss, miss on the short putts? Uh, definitely the left. More of a pull then? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. You're playing all over the place, so we'll, we'll take into account all types of green speeds here. Yeah, I definitely, I mean, I've gone from like playing on like sevens to like twelves. Oh yeah. Uh, from like the UK winters to like LA, well I guess winter here, but very different winter. That makes sense, that makes sense. There's that little bit of a pull there. 
Um, let's see, do you like to use a line on the ball when you putt? I've started to use one on the longer putts, but I'm still like kind of 50-50 on some of the shorter ones. Okay. Um, but definitely on the longer ones, I've started to adopt the line. Gotcha. Sounds good, buddy. Up. How about uh, type of golf ball that you like to play? Uh, pretty much always the Titleist ball. Um, I've historically played the AVX, but have recently been messing around with the left dash. Okay. Um, gotcha. Kind of reduce some of that spin, right? Exactly. Sure. Um, gotcha. And I've, so the reviews say it's apparently a little bit of a longer ball. Gotcha. There's a good stroke. Cool. You steal your putter? Um, but basically, the, the Quintec ball roll analysis is the is the putting software that we use in the studio here, um, and it's going to be measuring the little stickers, the white dots on your putter there. So okay. we're going to kind of measure how fast that putter's traveling to impact, how well we're squaring it up to the target, um, and then the golf balls that we're going to use also have little black dots on them, so we can really measure how the ball is coming off the base and, and how efficiently and consistently it's it's happening. Um, but the first thing we're going to do is calibrate your putter. After getting calibrated, I hit a couple of putts to get some preliminary data on how my current putter was performing. There we took a look at the Quintec putting software to see how my stroke was performing across dimensions like face angle, lie, attack angle, club twist, and more. Based on the red data that's seen across certain dimensions of the sampled putts, Alan then made some quick adjustments to my original gamer to see how that might improve so the results. Let's go ahead and try out the same putter. This is, this is your gamer. Um, we just added a little bit, of, little bit of loft, made it a tiny bit more upright. I want to try to get that ball rolling a little bit more efficiently. When you look down, does, does it look any different? Definitely, I can tell it looks a little bit more upright, or like... You can feel that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, nothing, nothing bad though, right? No, definitely not. Okay, got it. There we go. So if you take a look here, face angle came through a little bit left there, but now we're getting that launch angle, top spin roll that we're looking for, right? Yeah. So it's really more important on saying uphill putt, right? If we're hitting the ball down to the ground, it's going to be like accentuated on that uphill putt, right? It's going to take a lot of energy off the ball. Speed control gets a lot harder at that point. So I think that two and a half degree loft mark is going to be great. So let's put your putter on the shelf here. Okay. Okay, I'm going to take those stickers off. I wonder we're not hitting it down to the ground too much. Um, and those, the grooves on, on the even roll putter are really kind of designed for increased friction, right? So any group butter is gonna basically help push that ball forward, pick it up, right? Mm -hmm. um, get it rolling as quickly as possible. Um, the even little grooves, how they're a little bit different, they, they have a V shape towards the heel and toe, right? So the, the surface contact in the ball gets a little bit thicker towards the heel and toe. So what happens is you're hitting the ball a little bit harder where the putter is weaker, and you hit a little bit softer in the middle where the putter is stronger. So no matter where you hit it across that groove pattern, you're getting the same ball speeds, so it makes the, the control over distance a lot easier. Okay. That's awesome. So that, that's what it's really um, all about here in even roll, is, is uh, keeping the roll consistent. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and try our new EV2, okay? Cool. Our newer, newest model, we're gonna add a little bit of toe hang by going to the short plumber neck, okay? okay. Excellent, there we go. How'd that feel? Really good. Really good, yeah. Getting that line tumbling end over end. Again, we're about 70.5 on the lie, two and a half degrees of loft. Um, it is a half inch shorter than your putter. Got it up. Excellent. There we go. A lot more green numbers, right? Yeah. Perfect. All right. Do you have much preference between blade or mallet just by looking at it? You know, I've played like a mallet style my entire golfing career, mm -hmm. but I think I tend to be one where I'm very data and numbers driven, sure. performance driven, so sure. if something's going to work better, the numbers say it, I think I'll 
I'll sail with it. Perfect, perfect. Um, well, we're in a really good spot here with the EV2, okay? Short plumber, 35 inch. Um, swing weight is probably a little bit less than, than your putter because your putter grip is so light. Yeah. Right, it kind of throws the balance out a little bit. Yeah. Um, so we've added weight uh, mainly to the grip. Interesting. Um, and maybe a little bit to the head. So same, a little bit lower swing weight, heavier overall weight too. So that's gonna add to the stability even more for you. Um, let's see, let's see, let's try some mallet shapes. Cool. So we're gonna use all those nuts and bolts that we kind of figured out, apply it to some of these guys. All right, so let's um, take a look at some of these mallet shapes in the back. I'm gonna show you the EV5 lineup first. Okay, the EV5.1, 2, and 3. Half of this process is gonna be what gives you confidence, right? So what you like to look at. Um, which one's your favorite out of those three? You know, I think the middle one. Uh, a little bit more alignment, right? Yeah, Straight lines. I like the alignment. Perfect. And I kind of like the square notch versus I feel like a lot of them tend to have rounded notches. Yep. Yep. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Perfect. How about our three different finishes? Preferences there. You know, I think the uh, aesthetics in me really likes the all black, but I feel like the kind of like half and half one yep. probably is the more practical in terms of just like setup. And just well, like it, it gives you a lot more of that perpendicular alignment with the face. Yeah, right? so I feel like that'd be helpful. Perfect. We'll, we'll, we'll test out both um, the one color and the two tone here. These lined up. And we'll head over to our fitting matrix and build a couple putters up. Um, and let's see, I'm gonna ask you one more question. Well, between these two guys, any preference? Not really. Not really. I think they both. Yeah, I think I, I'd probably be pretty comfortable with both, just objectively. Okay, cool. Well, let's uh, let's use both of these. Cool. These are different enough to where uh, you worth it. I'm out of curiosity. I feel like there's this myth that if you have a very like straight and back putter, you should be going for like a blade style putter versus if you have more of an arcy stroke, you should be going mallet. Is that fully mesh or is it really like with the new technology and the way they're so customizable, it's really more like you just gotta get fit for the right thing and depending on personal preference, sort of like even a mallet can work well for a kind of straight back. Yeah, that's kind of the million dollar question, right? Is, is what's my toe hang? What type of stroke do I have, right? So um, in a lot of cases, it depends on the player. Sometimes toe hang won't matter at all, right? Sometimes it's the most crucial part of the whole thing, right? So um, the, the, the thing is we're gonna kind of throw a bunch of stuff at the wall, see what sticks best, see what toe hang is, is giving us the best numbers. Um, Cause there's a lot of other variables than just the toe hang, yeah. right? So um, that's just one little ingredient in the, uh, in the whole recipe. So um, for you though, that 35 degree toe hang seems to be uh, pretty consistent. Okay. Right? Um, so we're gonna stick with that with a little bit more of a mallet shape, okay? And one of the things that I usually tell people when we're increasing the stability of the MOI with a mallet like this, is it tends to get a little bit smoother on the takeaway. Yeah. Right, it's, it's not quite as shaky or wobbly on the way back. There's a good looking stroke. Yeah, I think that's probably something I do tend to struggle with a bit is on the takeaways, sometimes I'm able to square it up, but it's just like, sometimes it's more me having to think about it. Sure, than, sure. Uh, it just being fluid. From there, we tested a few different head shapes to see which versions inspired the most confidence and had the best numbers. We also tweaked my setup minorly to square things up a bit more. Pretty cool getting to see my putter built in front of me. From picking out the shaft to seeing the head go on and having everything cut and bent to my exact specs, this putter was truly set up for me. So 
move back here to the final product. Okay, we've got the EV 5.2. With the short plumber neck, we've got the 355 gram overall head weight. Uh, Tortac grip is also going to be about 90 grams. Swing weight, I would guess, is right around that E4 range. Okay, so drop the swing weight about eight points, increase the overall weight by about 45 grams. Okay. Wow. So um, this just this should be a lot easier to use. Amazing. All right, guys, that's a wrap for the fitting here at the Evenroll HQ. Alan has hooked me up with an EV 5.2 Duo. Super pumped to take this out onto the course. Playing Pinehurst next week, so lots of content to come. Um, overall, fitting experience has been fantastic here. I've really, really learned quite a bit about my strokes, some tips that I should be using for my setup, and also just getting a putter that is truly optimized for me. Massive thank you, Alan, for having me out and uh, super excited to be rolling this out on the greens. As always, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please crush that like and subscribe button.